the nuclear bazooka. America did that by the fat electrician. Now, as a quick aside for you to advertise with TOS purposes, obviously this is from a historical standpoint. You know, this is just a hindsight. We're looking at this from an educational standpoint, being explained to it in a very fun and personable manner. Please don't uh, don't at me if you. <laughs> It's been a problem recently, as well as copyright again. But alas, uh, I this is the follow-up from the Atomic Annie one. And logistically, how they seem to just make a more compact version of an implement that can just yeet a spicy projectile. So I'm very curious how this, uh, how this aligns with Atomic Annie's development and if these are still in service or what the end service date was for these. <laughs> Today we're talking about the time America built a nuclear bazooka. Officially known as the Battle Group Atomic Delivery System, it would huh. rapidly acquire the nickname, the Davy Crockett. You see, it all started in <laughs> 1786 when he was born with three ears, a left ear, a right ear, and the wild frontier. Wait, this is the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid, but that got me. Wikipedia page. Yeah. Davy Crockett nuclear device. That's better. Okay, here's the deal. Yeah. Once upon a time in the Cold War, the Soviet Union had way more tanks than America did. And America didn't no. want to have to build a bunch of their own tanks and ship them halfway across the world to Germany. So they needed a cheaper, more economical way to defeat enemy tanks. So they did. I mean, yeah, have a logistically sound way to tank bust, right? I would assume that would be the thing, right? If you're playing a game like a MOBA or you're playing any sort of really any PvE, PvP game, right? And you're running across big tanky units, right? You're going to find the most efficient way and the most logistical way to consistently defeat them, right? I mean, I think this is just the next logical step, right? I mean, you see a tank from Dead Space, right? Are you going <laughs> to necessarily... Uh, the Brute, right? And are you going to try to just, you know, take it out with a plasma cutter if you can? Or are you going to maybe use, like, all of your other weapons and potentially start running out of ammo? I mean, it's just one of those things that, like... Eh? <laughs> to me, it makes sense. Did the obvious thing and took their existing anti-tank weapon, the recoilless rifle, which is essentially a large bazooka, and figured out how to shoot a nuclear bomb out of it. Yeah. That nuclear bomb was the M388 tactical nuke equipped with the W54 warhead. This is probably the smallest nuclear weapon of all time. To put huh. it into perspective, on impact, this would deliver a blast yield of approximately 20 tons of TNT. That right. sounds like a lot, but when you're talking about nukes, comparing it to, like, say, Atomic Annie, which was 15,000 tons, no. it's quite a bit smaller. Lucky this seems like it might be the scalpel in comparison to the absolute sweeping, sweeping like cleaver that would be the other munitions. For us, they recorded it again. Let's go ahead and see the tape. The round was launched at H minus 17 seconds to accomplish H hour impact on the desired ground zero at a range of 2,852 meters. The round was set for a low height of burst. This audio quality is, is it tickles my brain. It detonated perfectly, releasing its lethal radiation. Wasn't that the most adorable yeah. nuclear explosion you've ever seen? But it's still yeah. definitely enough to take out an enemy tank. So mission well, yeah. accomplished, the end. I wish. So if you watched last week's video about Atomic Annie, you know that the Soviet Union and America were basically in a giant pissing match to see who could come up with the scariest nuclear weapon. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could say that, yeah. Honestly, it's still a better love story than Twilight, but it's terrifying. Yeah. So let's just recap that real quick. 1949, the Soviet dropped their first atomic bomb, which means America had to one-up them. So America created Atomic Annie, the world's first nuclear artillery piece. And then one year after that, the Soviet Union made their own version known as the Condensator. So America was back to square one, and we had to one-up them again. And while yeah. building a giant nuke Zooka is cool, it's not definitively cooler than atomic artillery. So how no. do you make it cooler? Well, it's the world's smallest nuclear weapon, so there's really only one thing to do with it. Try by. <laughs> yeah, they mounted it to a jeep. They literally... <laughs> as is the next logical... Uh... That, as is the next logical step. Just mount it, mount it to a jeep. Just mount it to a vehicle. I don't know what I was expecting, but that makes perfect sense, actually. They made a shoot and scoot. A yeet and retreat, <laughs> if you will. To be fair, they weren't actually supposed to shoot it while they were driving. They were supposed they to, did. you know, pull over and they aim. Did, but they? we all know what's really going to happen when you give three grunts, a jeep, and a nuclear bazooka. <laughs> Yeah. Yeehaw! I'm trying to tell you if you think two girls one cup is bad, three grunts Ooh. one jeep is way worse. No. Oh man, there's people that aren't gonna understand that reference. Oh no, there's people that don't know. They don't know. They don't know. 
Oh, I wish I didn't know. Okay, all jokes aside, I need you guys to understand, this is probably the closest humanity ever came to nuclear war. America yeah. gave three grunts complete discretion on when nuclear war started. I can't verify- I feel like this is by design, though. I felt like that was by design. <laughs> by this for sure, but I'm almost positive this is why they gave it the nickname, the Davy Crockett. Because according to the legend, Davy Crockett, the person, killed his first bear when he was three years old. I yeah. killed my pet raccoon! Why, Davy? So I could have this cool hat. The Soviet Union's <laughs> mascot is a bear. That is blatantly telling the Soviet Union to fuck around and find out. Oh, and we're not just talking about like one Jeep or a couple Jeeps. They made 2,100 of these fucking things. Yeah, I mean, it's like... Look, at that point, you just set up the pipeline. Just keep them coming. Like, even if they get decommissioned or like... Like, they go out of service, right? I don't know. That's one of those weird ones. Like, if they just get commissioned and then they go out of service, like, it was needed for the time, right? But I don't know. I don't know how that necessarily works. Because I've gone to up in, like, Idaho Falls area, like, East Idaho. There's, like, this giant Army Navy, like, warehouse. I love going there. and Like, when I've gone there. Um, love going there. I'm nowhere near it, unfortunately. That's, like, an actual day trip for me. Like, God, there's so many things that are, like military proprietary is the word i'm gonna use like there's so many attachments there's so many things from all of us there's so many things with like specific purposes that like i don't even think are even used anymore <laughs> so i don't really know like it's used they're used sometimes but not other times I, I don't know it's 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 strange to me but i mean as long as the money gets spent on defense right i mean it's a tax write-off right <laughs> I am thoroughly convinced the only reason this didn't start nuclear war is because the maximum effective range on the launcher is actually shorter than the minimum safe distance of the detonation of the nuclear warhead. Meaning yeah. that if you were actually close enough to accurately aim, you were also probably going to die from the nuclear fallout. Luckily, military <laughs> leadership would come to their senses and pull this monstrosity from the front lines before some group of grunts got brave enough to try to shoot it from behind and outrun the blast. Yeah. Get off the nuclear warhead. I mean, they, they they would do that, though, wouldn't they? They would definitely do that. They, they would definitely be like, I, I can run it. I can outrun it. <laughs> it was then completely removed from service by 1971. And according to the now declassified documents, huh. when the leadership of the 3rd Armored Division was asked by Congress why the Davy Crockett weapon system was decommissioned, he responded, and I quote, Since it was essentially a platoon weapon, command and control was a problem. <laughs> Apparently, there was some great fear that a sergeant would start a nuclear yeah. war. In conclusion, please do not get in a pissing contest with America. We will win or we will start the apocalypse trying. I'm not saying yeah. it's right. I'm just saying that's probably what would happen. Tune in next yeah. week. Who knows what we'll talk about? Maybe we'll talk about that time America wanted to nuke the moon because we were losing the space race. Thank you for watching. Legends. I hope you enjoyed it. Best way to support the channel is go yeah. buy some merch at thefoulelectrician.com. Yeah. Quack yeah. bang out. No, I mean, that's, that's well with an expectation for the U.S., I feel. <laughs> it's just... If, if we can't have the moon, no one can have the moon. <laughs> it's so, so funny. But like, yeah, no, maybe pulling that from service, maybe decommissioning, that was probably the, the good idea. It was... Well, what was it? The Iron Curtain fell... That was like mid-80s, early 90s, right? Was when the Soviet Union dissolved? Yeah, it had to have been early 90s, yeah. So like... That was actually decommissioned fairly early. And I do feel, I mean, obviously, right. I'm assuming if you're a sergeant, if you're any sort of, you know, um, commanding officer, if you're any sort of senior officer over individuals, right. I'm assuming that you would be, you know, yeah, no, I got, I got everything under control, but at the same time, there's a spicy, <laughs> it's a spicy bazooka <laughs> that, you know, people are going to be like, I can outrun it <laughs> because it, that's definitely that had to have definitely been a conversation definitely would have had to be a conversation between some people but i mean yeah no this seems like it'd be more logistically sound probably easier to produce probably cheaper to produce actually um i'm very curious like how would a uh, senior officer or commanding officer handle something like this if you had uh some uh personnel that were getting a little too uh little too ready to use something like this <laughs> i mean is this one of those things that is just like this was a product of its era do you think that this is something that would see uh see improvement today 
And if it potentially has, please don't tell me because I'm 90% sure that'd be under OPSEC and I definitely don't want anyone to get in trouble. <laughs> I guess this was really fun. Actually, I really love this. And if you would like to watch the full and unedited version, you should absolutely go and check out The Fat Electrician. He puts out awesome work. He puts out great content. I'm going through some of his older videos, some of his newer videos as well. Just, you know, they're a little longer. I have to take my time. I want to make sure I'm giving them the respect that they deserve. And I try to give them like a week in the algorithm and then I'll do a reaction to that. That way I'm doing it as ethically as I can. And, you know, I, he, he's okay with React content. I just want to make sure that I'm doing the best I can to be transformative loosely is what I'll say it as, right? I want to make sure that I'm just not being a dick about it. <laughs> but alas, thank you for watching. Definitely go check out The Fat Electrician. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.